um, just the the inability of of the roots to or inability of the nutrients to move around so much in the soil and, and the limitations from the, the roots to, to be able to find it. And, and this uh, is speaking of, of phosphorus there where really it's only gonna be able to find it within two to four millimeters. Um, sorry, Neil, I'd have to do the conversion. Uh, it's not a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, there, that, that's going to compound the problem as well. And, and ensuring that, that, that stuff is nearby and, and close for it to access is going to be critical. And you start, you start adding in the micronutrients too, like copper, it's, it's not very mobile at all. And you got to really rely on that, that ability of the plant to find it. That's why when you talk about, we look at our, our Yarvita Procoat product, um, getting that distribution in the soil, getting that, those feeding sites out there, this is the type of thing where it becomes uh, just critical. Mm -hmm. And I know for my area, at least, like um, if you know Southern Alberta, you know about uh, Feedlot Alley. There's a lot of manure that's used in our area. And I don't know if you have it in your slides, Cody, but uh, the molders chart, you know, as soon as we start getting some manure down, we get really high phosphorus levels. And all of a sudden that nutrient will interact with the other nutrients and not those, like, like Mark was saying, the nutrients might say that they're available, might show that there's enough to grow that crop, but there's so much phosphorus, it's actually inhibiting the like copper and zinc uptake in that plant. So those are other nutrients we're starting to focus on a little bit more because you know, like I said, soil sample might say they're good, but with the amount of manure we're putting on, I don't know if they're actually as available as they should be. 